Okay, so here's example five with implicit differentiation. So uh, here we're going to find d2y dx squared. Uh, remember that's the second derivative. So uh, our equation here, or our curve or whatever, is uh, x to the fifth y cubed equals seven. Okay, so now we want to find the second derivative. So um, how do we do the second derivative with implicit differentiation? Well, um, there's really nothing special to it. It just it could get kind of messy sometimes. Uh, it won't be too bad at this example, but um, you know, just like with explicit functions, just uh, find the first derivative and then take the derivative again, and then that'll give you the second derivative. So um, basically, we just want to do the same thing we've been doing with these examples. Uh, ddx of the left equals ddx of the right. Okay, so uh, ddx of seven. Okay. Um, so, let's go ahead and work on this. Uh, on the left we have a product, so we're going to have to do product rule. So, d dx of x to the fifth y cubed, uh, product rule says it's derivative of the first, which is, oh, use a different color, uh, derivative of the first is 5x to the fourth times the second thing. Okay, so derivative of the first times the second plus the first x to the fifth, times the derivative of the second. Okay, And the second is y cubed, so we're implicitly differentiating with respect to x, so the uh, derivative is 3y squared, and then from the chain rule we have dy dx. Okay, so remember, uh, just to recap again, y is a function of x implicitly, and then we raise it to the third power, so it's a chain rule thing. Okay, it's a function of x being raised to the third power. So chain rule says, derivative of the big guy, evaluated at the little guy, times the derivative of the little guy. Okay? And remember, that's implicit differentiation, and implicit differentiation is chain rule. So uh, that's the left side of the equation. On the right side, we have d dx of 7. 7 is just a constant, so its derivative is 0. Uh, this time we do have to write a 0, because that's all that's over there. Um, okay, so now we just get dy dx by itself on one side, everything else on the other, um, which in this case just means subtract 5x to the fourth y cubed uh, from both sides. So on the left side, what are we going to have? We're going to have 3x to the fifth y squared dy dx. 3x to the fifth y squared dy dx. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, we have minus uh, 5x to the fourth y cubed. Okay, Because we subtracted this from both sides, so we're going to have minus 5x to the fourth y cubed. All right? And now... Um, we divide both sides by 3x to the fifth y squared, so then dy dx will be by itself on the left. Uh, and then when we do that, we have, um, let's actually go ahead and do it like this. Let's say divided by 3x to the fifth y squared, and then divided by uh, 3x to the fifth y squared. Okay, so I want to do it like that because um, we can see now this simplifies pretty nicely. So y squared on the bottom, y cubed on the top, so this all just goes away, and then we just have a y on top. x to the fourth on top, x to the fifth on the bottom. So this all goes away, and then we just have an x on the bottom. So, uh, and then of course this all cancels here. And then what we have left is uh, dy dx equals negative 5y over 3x. So let's put the negative sign out here, and then we have a 5y over 3x, okay? Or um, another way of writing that is just uh, negative 5 thirds times y over x. And let's go ahead and leave it like that, negative 5 thirds times y over x. So dy dx is negative 5 thirds times y over x. And that's nice, you know, that's kind of a simple expression, um, but we're not quite done yet because we wanted to find d2y dx squared. So that's uh, the second derivative. And remember, the second derivative is just the derivative of the first derivative. So what we're going to do then is um, take the first derivative that we just found, okay, and then we're going to take the derivative of it. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, d2y dx squared equals d dx of dy dx. Okay, so this is just um, what we just said, uh, but written in math notation. So the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. Okay, 
So d2 y dx squared is just the derivative of dy dx. Um, and dy dx we know is negative 5 thirds times y over x. So that's why I wanted to write it like this so the negative 5 thirds can be out here and we can just pull it out. Um, so we're going to have d dx of negative 5 thirds times y over x. So now negative 5 thirds, just, it's a constant being multiplied by all this stuff, so we'll just pull it out of the derivative and we'll just ignore it until the end. So uh, equals negative 5 thirds times uh, d dx of y over x. Okay, so now um, we have a quotient here, okay, so we have to do quotient rule. Um, so this is going to be negative 5 thirds times, what's the quotient rule say? It says, uh, okay, we have uh, d dx of y over x, so uh, top over bottom. Quotient rule says the derivative is uh, bottom times the derivative of the top, okay, and the derivative of y is just dy dx, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. The bottom is x, so the derivative of the bottom is just 1. <clears throat> All right, and then all that's divided by the bottom squared. Okay, so um, this is d2y dx squared, but it's uh, not really okay to leave our answer like this because we can simplify a little more. Um, dy dx, we know what dy dx is, okay? It's uh, negative 5 thirds times y over x. So this is dy dx, right? dy dx equals this. Okay, so we're going to take this and uh, stick it on up into here and then simplify that. So this is negative 5 thirds oops, uh, times x times dy dx. What's that again? It's negative 5 thirds y over x. So this is being multiplied by uh, negative 5 thirds, oops, sorry about that, uh, times y over x minus y. y times 1 is just y, so we just have y there. And then uh, still x squared on the bottom. Okay, so um, this is good because we have x times negative uh, 5 thirds times y divided by x. So this x cancels with this x, all right? So this x and this x cancel, and then what we're really left with is negative 5 thirds times negative uh, 5 thirds y minus y all over x squared, all right? So now we can simplify the top pretty nicely. Um, negative 5 thirds minus, uh, sorry, negative 5 thirds y minus y. Uh, if we get a common denominator up there, uh, y can be rewritten as 3 over 3 times y, okay? Because it's just 1 times y, so we can rewrite it as 3 over 3 times y, because 3 over 3 is just 1. We have a common denominator. Uh, negative 5 thirds y minus 3 thirds y is negative 8 thirds y. So um, running out of room over here, so let's go back to the left. Okay, so then uh, that's going to equal um, negative 5 thirds, so let's rewrite it over here just so it's uh, easier to see. Okay, so that's what we uh, left off with over here. So negative 5 thirds y minus 3 thirds y, that's negative 8 thirds y. So we have negative 5 thirds times negative 8 thirds y all over x squared. And now we can simplify this. Um, the negative 8 thirds can just be pulled off the top of the fraction. And what we have is negative 5 thirds times negative 8 thirds, which is 40 over 9. And then we're still left with the uh, y over x squared. Okay, so again, the negative 8 thirds can just be pulled off the top because it's just uh, a constant being multiplied by uh, the only thing on the top. So we can just pull that off. Um, and then negative 5 thirds times negative 8 thirds is 40 over 9. And then y over x squared is what's left. So that's our second derivative. Um, or we could write it as 40y over 9x squared. Uh, it doesn't really matter, though. But in any case, uh, this is our second derivative here that, and then we'll say this is uh, d2y dx squared, okay? Remember, um, to find the second derivative, we started up here, 
after we found the first derivative. Uh, then we went all the way down here, and then this we rewrote over here, and then equals that, simplify, simplify, um, and that's our answer. So when you're finding the second derivative for implicit differentiation, um, it really pretty much is the same kind of process. You just find the first derivative, and then take the derivative again to get the second derivative. So this example wasn't too bad, but um, it could get pretty messy depending on what the original function is. Uh, but the idea will always be the same. Just take the derivative and then take the derivative again, and that'll give you the second derivative.